Hello and welcome to this quick video tutorial on how to use the laser slicer add-on for Blender 2.8. I will just very briefly go through installing the add-on, um, edit, preferences, we've got a little add-ons tab here. Um, you can download the zip file of the master branch direct from GitHub uh, and I'll put a link to that in the video description and that zip file once you've saved it onto your computer you can use this install button here navigate to that zip file double click on it or click on it and install add-on from file and that will register the laser slicer add-on within your list of add-ons and if you come down to the object section you should see laser slicer in there and then you click on that little square and that will activate the add-on and you're all ready to go so once that's been done um, your right hand 3d view panel which you can toggle on and off with the n key or you can use this little button here belief beneath view you should have a laser tab and the laser tab contains all settings for the laser slicer add-on. Uh, the first set of settings are for the material. Now the laser slicer add-on takes an object in Blender and on the XY plane top to bottom it will cut a number of slices through that object and it will save those slices to an SVG file. The reason I use it, the reason I created it was because then I can use that SVG file with a laser cutter to cut the form out of whatever material. And these settings define that material. How thick the material is, I'll stick with two millimeters for now, and the width and height of the material you're gonna be using. Uh, I think the laser cutter we have at work defaults to 450 wide by 450 deep, so that's what I've got set as the default here. We then have some settings for the cut itself. Uh, DPI is important because SVG doesn't have a sort of native support for absolute dimensions. Uh, it tends to have pixels. So if you want the slices from here to come out the same dimension as they are within your Blender file, then it's important that this DPI is set to the same DPI as the software you use to send stuff to a laser cutter. Now in Inkscape, I think the default DPI is 96. I think I use Coral Draw to print to a laser cutter and I believe the default DPI in that is 96 as well. If you find in your application that you're using to print to the laser cutter that the dimensions are different from your Blender file, then you might need to tweak this DPI setting a little bit. Uh, the laser cutter I've got at work has um, uses red as the color of the line to signify a cut. So I've got red as a default here. You can change to whatever you want. Um, there's a thickness of the cut, the cut lines in pixels as well. Um, we've got the opportunity to separate files I'll come to that later. I'll turn that off for now. We've got a cut spacing, which means the distance between a cut and the edge of the SVG page, or the distance between cuts that are placed next to each other on an SVG page. And we have an option here to write out more accurate SVG polygons rather than simple lines. Uh, I'll come to this option again a little bit later. I'm going to keep it off for now. And we have here the option to export a particular file. Now, I haven't saved this Blender file, and there's nothing in here. So the button, which should appear down here, which would allow me to cut this object, doesn't appear. I either need to save this file somewhere, in which case, when we slice, we will create SVG files in the same directory as the Blender file. And the names of those SVG files will be the name of the object, Suzanne in this case. And then if we've 
options to separate out SVG files, it would be suzanne1.svg, suzanne2.svg, etc. Uh, instead, I'm going to open up a file here, or a file name, I'm just going to pick one that I created before, which is new test SVG. And once I've selected that, then as long as I have an object selected, then I should now have this slice object button. Now, one thing to note, once you've selected an object, based on these settings, you'll get the number of slices you're going to cut. Now, I'm currently going to cut 956 slices. 956 slices through Suzanne here. And that's because I've got a thin material and Suzanne is about two blender units high, which by default is two meters in laser slicer add-on terms. So you can change the scale in here and that will be respected, but I'm just going to scale Suzanne down to give me something a little bit more manageable. So 28 slices. That's fine. So now if I slice the object, it's very quick. We can see we've got a new object called slices. And if I move that, then we can see this uh, sort of representation within Blender, which you could use to sort of do a quick sanity check on the cut. Uh, so we've got 28 slices running through Suzanne. And that has now been saved to an SVG file. And if I open up that SVG file, I've got it viewed in Inkscape at the minute. We can see that each slice has been placed next to each other. It goes along rows, and then when a row is full, it uh, fills up sort of subsequent rows. This page is 450 mil by 450 mil, as set up in our user settings. Because I didn't turn on SVG polygons, and I went for the quick um, sort of line style, or simple export of lines, if I ungroup one of these slices, we can see that it's actually just made up of little lines. You can even see where one line starts and one line ends. Now a laser cutter will cut this, but if it's not clever about the ordering of what it cuts, it might do this cut, then this cut, then this cut, then this cut. Likely to give you a dirty cut, and it could take a very, very long time. So this non-SVG polygon export, I wouldn't recommend it if you're actually going to do laser cutting. It can be useful for preview, etc., but not for actual laser cutting. If I do turn on SVG polygons, re-click on the, my valid mesh object, slice the object, now takes a little bit longer. Uh, not too long, I hope. It's 28 slices. I've got a two-level subdivision on Suzanne. So it's a relatively complex geometry, but that is now done. And if I come back into Inkscape and revert that, I've got exactly the same. But now I should see that I can't ungroup this object because it is all one object. It's one polygon. And if I zoom in on the line, you can see I've got no breaks. This is one continuous polygon. So a laser cutter will go around and cut this in an efficient manner. So although it takes longer, I do strongly recommend SVG polygons to be turned on if you're going to do any actual laser cutting. Um, if I choose separate files, then I will create one file per slice. So 28 files in this case. And if I choose that, then I can now choose whether the slice in each file is pl placed in the top left. So up, up, uh, up here. Or I can select whether it's staggered. So it will mimic this spacing. It's just that each one will appear in, in a separate file on its own. Or I can set it to center. So each slice would appear within the center of the SVG page. And those files will then, as I mentioned before, either be mentioned 
object name number .svg in the directory where you saved your Blender file, or it will take this name and it will put in a one, two, three, four, five, six after the file name. So it would be new test one .svg, new test two .svg in the same place directory you specified the file to be in. Uh, modifiers are respected. So you see I've got a Catmull Clark subdivision on Suzanne. I haven't applied it, but that is still respected in the laser cut. So if I go back to uh, uh, a zero application of the Catmull Clark, then I get a much more unrefined slice. And I think that's everything I have to cover. Okay, thanks for watching.